Well, it's Tackle Tart number 10, and as you can see, I'm in front of my Heroes board today, uh, sponsored by Rock Salt and Soul, Bankery's finest fish and chip shop, breaded fish, tiger prawns, courtesy of Chizzy, amazing chips. You've got this man here, great favourite of mine, 10 points if you can uh, guess who that is, and we all know who that is, of course, that's Jimmy from Quadrophenia. Anyway, what am I talking about? Today's subject for Tackle Tart is Skagit Lines. Skagit Lines, the River Skagit in Washington, USA. Famous steelhead river. And you know what? In today's COVID world, we all know that necessity is the mother of all invention. So where is this going? First of all, on the Skagit, you have to be able to cast these huge flies, these huge steelhead flies, often tungsten weighted, large bulky flies. Now to do that, the only way you can get that fly across the river is to use a very thick line. Now way back in the late 90s, characterised by Ed Ward and his cohorts, they started cutting up double taper hardy lines in 10s, 11s and 12s to make thick, short shooting heads. And these thick lines were ideal in turning over those massive flies. Typically, those heads are only 19 to 26 feet long, you know, as opposed to a typical fly line of 30 yards. I've got a couple of these. Don't use them very often in the UK, probably on the tumble in the winter when I want to get down deep, maybe on the Tay, similarly. But the sexy one I've got here is the 15 foot OPST Commando line. An amazing line for short rods. You can get those flies right the way across. Skagit lines, kind of interesting, bit of a niche area. I'm not gonna go on about it too much more. Needless to say, you probably want one in your armory. You're not gonna use it all that often. So, if you wanna to get to Sugar Town, if you wanna get your fly down deep, particularly if you're fishing for steelhead in the Pacific Northwest, get yourself a Skagit line. 